everybody. I am trying one of my ideas that I've been thinking about for a while. Uh, it's dealing with glass beads um, in a medium by Liquitex and flexible modeling paste. First time I've worked with either one of them. Let's experiment and have some fun. Hopefully everyone is doing well. Um, I am excited. I discovered I hit 1,500 subscribers yesterday. And I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to do um, to, to mark the occasion. So if you're one of my subscribers or anybody watching, I maybe by the end of this video, because this is going to be a multi-step video, I will have decided what I'm going to do. But um, keep listening and I'll let everybody know. So, I'm wanting to do sort of a texturized painting. I'm not sure if I'm going to end up boring, doing a pour over it or if I'm going to do um, more of a painting, make it more of painted. Haven't completely decided, but what I am going to do is I am going to make a flower out of this. So, here we go. Um, and I'm going to do kind of the way I like to do my flowers do a partial corner and the flower over here. So I'm gonna use the glass beads medium as my center. Let's see how that works. Um, like I said, this is sort of the first time I've worked with these products. So we'll see how this works. I'm taking it to the edges. It's, these mediums are nice and thick. They're um, very thick. They don't run, as you can see. I see it doesn't, nothing dripping off. So I'm, um, sorry about that. I'm um, gonna spread it. Here like this. Do you hear the beads? It's got little glass beads, it says. I don't know if it's really glass, but they're, they are little beads. I can I did feel that when I was opening the, the, the jar. I got my finger in it. So we're gonna see how this works. Don't know if it will or not. Sorry, I'm having trouble concentrating and talking here a little bit. <laughs> here we go. And I've got this around here like this. How did you up in its face? Actually, I probably had you off camera. <laughs> Here we go, see, I've taken and just sort of spread it, made the center. This is where the center of my fire will be and I will paint it later. I don't know how this works other than it is a texture. So we'll see. So now that I'm done with that, I'm gonna put the lid on the jar. Um, this is a, going to be a multi-step process. Um, uh, and uh, great, like is it gonna let that dry? But in the meantime, I'm going to take and I'm gonna start adding the flower, the petals. And this is, uh, as I said, flexible modeling paste. Um, sorry, I'm reading something on the jar. Um, yeah, and I'm going to start putting 
just using I'm just using a palette knife. Um, I'm going to start and make some petals. And I am texturizing my side, the side too. Doesn't bother me in the least. I love having texture on my paintings. So this is kind of cool. We're going to see how well it works. My concept. Actually, I think I can put it on kind of like this. This is going to be kind of cool because it'll be a different effect than what I normally do when, although I build up, a lot of times I do my petals, my flowers, I build them up with the paint. This will be kind of nice because it's not my paint. So it's sort of like sculpting, I guess, if I look at it that way. So I want to shape my petal a little bit here. I'm sure there's people out here that are just that know how to do this or just going no 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 but I like to experiment and try myself that's me I like to do it myself I can ask my mom about that topic probably used to drive them up a wall I do it myself mommy I'm gonna get some here there's the petals in between it'll be a little flatter sitting here kind of sculpting. I think I hear my dog whining. And I think I think she's bugged dad enough that he's getting ready to let him let her out. And I just keep sculpting and spray doing this. There goes the dog. And, you know, I'm trying to judge the right length. This, then I make the petals because they should come out quite a distance for that size center.
So I'm going to continue with this, building it. And I'll come back, show you what it looks like um, once this has been set and dried. Um, I'm just going to continue around. Um, I may add some petals in between, um, but I'm going to try to make it look like a real, real, real flower. So we'll be back to the now when I'm ready for the next step. Well, as you can see, I'm back with my flower that I use the glass gel beads once again, and the that's what I used. <laughs> The flexible modeling paste. Um, it's dry. It's not in. It's not how I'm judging. It's dry. Is it's not cool to touch. And when I press on it with my hand, since this is a stretch canvas, I put my hand underneath, and when I press, it doesn't give. Um, so we're going to. I have done a pour where I use some of just the glass beads on some spots, and um, that one uploaded before this um, and we're we're watching to see how it dries um, it's not completely dry yet um, in fact I'm it's I wouldn't even say it's begun to get much dry at all I'm doing these sort of back-to-back -back, um, on my video so um, I am kind of excited today because um, I've not also I'm going to be uh, using for the first time my primary elements on something uh, that I really feel that they'll show up and be something significant on. Um, this is going to be a flower of colors of my choice. Kind of maybe unusual, but what I want. Um, I may use some other paints with this as well, but for my center section, I'm going to use um, Cool Water, Snapdragon, and Blue Bayou. And this paint is, um, you mix it yourself, for those that aren't familiar with it. And um, let's see, will it focus? There you go. It's, the camera won't stop moving. There we go, sorry colorart.com and it's C O L U Let's try this again. C O L O U R A R T E.com Okay. You see here that I have three shades um, that I list all the colors are listed below uh, the video in the description. Um, and what I'm doing now is going to make a layered effect um, using the primary elements uh, from color art and I put a dark, few darker colored the snapdragon down and then I put cool, cool water over it and I am accenting it with the blue bayou um, <clears throat> next I will be doing the background I want to create sort of a washed denim fabric look to it uh, which is why I kind of start with the cool water and the blue bayou and I do add it back in some snapdragon I know it seems sort of strange to have the center in the uh, background the same but you'll see what I do later to kind of make that center different and sorry about the uh, fact that the camera I'm Working on mastering that for you guys. Sorry, uh, the yeah, I have to hold it to get all angles because of this being the texturized painting. You have nooks and crannies, and I get right up against the edge of those petals while I'm painting this background. Um, right now, I'm just you know, like I said, I I, I want a fabric look, so I don't care if I have uh, brush strokes and a. Uh, differing in the sort of a dye pattern type thing kind of like jeans wear different in different spots so but I wanted to have a little darker definitely a little darker between each petal kind of like a little bit of a shadow effect
and I get the edges because I did carry the uh, flowers, the petals, all that down around the edge so that this can be mounted unframed or I may, uh, I may decide to mount it like in a shadow frame or on just a board unless somebody just wants it as is. <laughs> Having to mix up those paints a little bit to stretch them. And there we go. See, I've gotten a little darker. I put a touch of purple in there. Not much, but touch of purple. Creating texture with doing uh, like uh, X strokes or cross strokes. Making sure my edges are coated. Don't forget your edges. Next I'll be going back to the center of the flower and doing a little bit of a variation to make it look different than this background. And as you see, um, the center is a little darker than the background. What I'm wanting to do is to kind of add a washed like effect. So um, I was trying to decide what color I wanted to use. What I ended up using was the Vallejo Mars Yellow and I put that in and it, it is a um, it says it's opaque I was able by putting it on and using the paper towel to wipe it off and blot it off to kind of create sort of a, a more transparent feel with it um, this is turning the center of the flower a little more traditional color but not taking away the blue entirely so it's just a dot, blot, blot on with the, the brush and then blot, just dab and kind of stroke stroke it off, uh, rub it off a little bit, not, not a lot. Doing the same on the sides. Now I will use the thin down metallic and that is uh, Liquitex gold, metallic gold that I thin down with just a little bit of water um, just so that it'll be a little um, I don't want to say runny, but it can be treated a little more like a glaze. Next, I will start with the petals. Uh, you can see I, I blow dry a little bit between a lot of times, just to take a little tacky so I don't get it all over my hands. Um, I'm using, um, I did not end up using the Quinacridone Crimson. Um, colors I did use to mix my colors were Transparent orange, naphthol red, and titanium white from uh, Vallejo fluid, li uh, fluid acrylics. And I'm taking care to get every nook and cranny with this light color. This is a, uh, that is stop motion, um, or not stop motion, but sped up. How's that sound? <laughs> so you didn't have to take forever. This this would be a very long video if I did, should, did not edit this and do this this way. Now when I'm done with this, I'm not real sure about that color. I'm not don't like it. it's little um little too orange. So I definitely have picked up and um, added a touch more of the uh, naphtha crimson to the mix there, so that it has a little more red tint and um, one's got a little more white than the other, just a little bit. I'm going to completely coat all the petals um, for the most part. There'll be a little bit of the light color showing through, but not a lot, with the medium tone. Um, and I'm finishing up these petals, doing that, making sure I don't have any white spots. With that texture, you do have to turn it and flip it and look, and they creep up on you. I do take the darker tone in the next step and I do not um, coat the entire petal. I'm trying to get the low spots, trying to get you know the nooks and crannies with the, the deeper tone, little darker color, uh, just to make the petals have a little more dimension. Then in the next step I take Art Deco fire opal which is a metallic and I just sort of go over all of it it does not completely um, it's not totally opaque 
but it does become predominant and then you see those layers of depth of color underneath it. One step, last step, I take Liquitex uh, per, um, iridescent medium and I coat over the flower and the center a little bit. There you go. And now. Final. Final shot of this. <laughs> um, it's not quite like our uh, a pour where it's not where my pour is not gonna where I do a bunch of them and I'm gonna wait. But this one is, I would say, sit here. There you go. See? Do you see the look at the iridescent shine on the in here too? Let's see, that one's complete. Thank you for watching. Um, and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you would like to see more of my experiments, my fun, my pouring, my alcohol inks, and whatever else I may get into, uh, stick around and subscribe. And if you want to be notified when I do upload new videos, uh, you can click the bell for notification. And at this point, I'm going to wish you, everyone, a good day, night, evening, whatever it is when you finish watching this. And until the next video, go out and create and have some fun.